So, A way of looking at the world, a way of thinking, and a way of approaching problems that sets them apart. That's what is a real engineer all about. Hence, engineering is considered to be foundation of civilization. As engineering is not only about making things work, but making them work effectively and economically. On this note, I would like to invite cultural team of G set for invocation. Thank 
of Engineers Day, on behalf of GSEF family, I, Dr. Kavindra Jain, faculty from Electronics and Communication Department, take the utmost pleasure in extending a warm and heartfelt welcome to our Honorable Provost, CBM University, Dr. Himanshu Soni, sir. Today's keynote speaker, Engineer Aarti Vaishnav, ma'am, Sri Lalit Bhai Mehta, Sri Rashmi Bhai, Shri Rajnikan Bhai from GH Patel Trust. Principal Sir, respected heads of all the departments, faculty, colleagues, and my dynamic young budding engineers. Happiness, health is the seed, and happiness shared is the flower. Now, I would like to request Provost Sir to kindly felicitate Sri Lalit Bhai Mehta Sir from GH Patel Trust. Sir, please. We welcome you, sir. I would again like to request Provost sir to kindly felicitate Sri Rajnikan, sir. Sir, Rashmi. Sorry, Rashmi. Rashmi, my answer is. The brainchild behind G.H. Patel Memorial Lecture Series was initiated by our own Provost Sir. I would like to request Dr. Desh Darshak Desai Sir, Principal, in charge Principal G. Sir, to kindly provide bouquet of flowers to Provost Sir. In contribution to this series, today we are having the third memorial lecture on sharing and caring the role of corporate world by engineer Aarti Vaishnav Man. I would now request Dr. Vipul Shah sir to kindly provide bouquet of flowers to Aarti Man. Now I would request Dr. Yogesh Chauhan sir to kindly provide bouquet of flowers to Darshak Desai sir, in charge principal G sir. Thank you sir. I would now request Dr. Yogesh Chauhan sir to kindly brief the audience about philanthropy Sri G.H. Patel, sir. Sir, please. Highly respected and most honorable Sri Gordon Bhai Hathi Bhai Patel, who was popularly known as 
श्री गोर्धन काका वॉक द पाथ ऑफ लाइफ विथ अटमोस्ट सिंप्लिसिटी एंड मॉडेस्टी and left an everlasting impression on of his footprints on the future generations today i feel very fortunate to have this opportunity to introduce such a great personality originally from karamsar gurdan kaka moved to africa where he initially opted for a job and then ventured into business he became the owner of wooden forests and then involved himself in the business of automobile agency through which he earned a lot he returned to india in 1981 for about a year he stayed in mumbai and then he got settled in vadodara gradually he started donating to organizations according to geeta's karma yoga maru kamayelu e asaguru asansaru it like all my earnings are of this world believing very strongly in this philosophy In year 1994-95, he formed a trust and donated his entire earnings to this trust. In the past, a person who owned an automobile agency did not even own a car when he returned to India. Pujya Gurdan Kaka's entire life was a testimony to absolute simplicity and humbleness. He genuinely lived an like ideal life with great human values. As far as I know, even personally. when he was coming from vadodara to vallabh vidyanagar for donating money to any of the educational institutes he was travelling through public transport like st bus majority of his donations were in the field of education and health sector i am sure all of you are also aware that he has donated massive amount of money for this very institute that is gordon bai athi bai patel college of engineering and technology popularly known as gc on this occasion i'm sure that in a subtle form he is showering his blessings to this institute and everyone associated with this institute we most respectfully bow down to him for influencing the lives and shaping the future of numerous students let us dedicate a fragrant flower in his fit in the form of a lecture which would be the third in the gh patel memorial lecture series i request all of you to put your hands together in the loving and divine memory of sri gordan bai athi bai patel thank you very much thank you sir now i would request dr vipul shah sir to kindly introduce to the audience our today's keynote speaker our own alumni of gset engineer arthi vaishnav ma'am ma'am sir please very good afternoon to all of you dignitaries dignitaries on the dais of the dais dear student friends greetings of engineers day it's my privilege and pleasure to introduce our all arthi vaishnav founder and ceo exact incorporated us in the ceo role arti is accountable for overseeing all corporate functions as well as external affairs for the company under her leadership exact has grown its revenue base to over 10 million us dollars while sustaining a phenomenal 40% year on year growth she has taken exact from a vision to one one of the industry's leading education software providers arthi's deep domain knowledge and customer focus has enabled her to successfully lead exact's growth over the last 9 years armed with 15 years of experience in the higher education space along with a master's degree in computer science and applied biostatistics and epidemiology from the university of southern california and a knack of solving complex problems with technology arthi embarked upon her entrepreneurial journey a decade ago arthi also on her executive mba 
from USC Marshall School of Business in 2013. She actively mentors young employees and also seeks out mentors and advisors to learn and grow as a leader. As the founder and chief executive officer of Exec, Aarti brings people and technology together. She firmly believes that a company's vision and core values play an important role in its success. Companies as a result are built, not launched. She spoke on this topic at TEDx at GSET in 2018. Exet is a great place to work certified company. It also conferred the Economic Times Future Ready Organization 2023-24. Recently, an article featuring Exet has been published as a case study in the prestigious Harvard Business Review. This is her professional profile. Her personal profile is also interesting, especially for the GSET. She was part of the GSET's first batch of IT students in the year 1996. Her deep attachment to her alma mater suggests that she values the education and experiences received at GSET. Whenever she visits India, she tries her best to pay visit at the GSET. She is a part of CVM University Computer IT Board of Studies. She is an active alumna who contributes and supports GSET in various capacities. Her husband, Kunal Vaishnav, being from the same batch as her, shared a unique academic journey together. When Aarti visits GSET, we feel like degree uh, peer marriage. <laughs> One fine day, Aarti Kunal came to GSET and they said, Sir, give us a paper. They wrote, we wish to donate rupees 25 lakhs for our students. And you utilize the amount to distribute as scholarships. Till now, we have received rupees 15 lakhs and around 160 students received scholarships. Also, <laughs> also the amount prizes of thousand dollars each to girls as a Jaswini Award, Udar for startup, and Samarthan for social outreach. <laughs> Exit also offers internship and placement to the students of GSET. Even she used to help uh, our students uh, who are going to study further study at US. She is living the life which described in the sloka Atmartha Jiva Lokesmin Kona Jivati Manava Param Paropakarartha Yo Jivati Sajivati. In this world, Everyone lives to satisfy his or her own desires. But those persons live a real and prosperous life to live for the sake of helping others. Jisat family is pleased to welcome Aarti at her own home. Thank you. I would now request all the dignitaries to join us off the stage for the plenary talk. Ma'am, please continue. Come on, slide. Come on, get on. Yeah, sure. So, is number one. Okay, 
Hello everyone. I hope I can do justice to that amazing introduction. And I'm very, very happy to be here with you, especially on World Engineers Day. Um, I but right before this uh, presentation, I was talking to all the girls who had applied for the Tejas Me Award. And I was completely amazed with the talent, the clarity, the sortedness that these girls had. And then I had a really difficult job to do. I had to pick the best out of those seven kids. And it was an impossible task because they all were amazing in their own um, place. So this year, instead of just awarding the top three girls, we're going to award all of them. <laughs> myself 23 years ago when I graduated from here, did I have this level of clarity? Absolutely not. You guys are way, way, way ahead of the curve from where we started our journey. So I'm very, very humbled, very happy, very, very excited to be here with all of you. All right. So um, the topic for today's discussion is how can corporations do more um, for the society, right? We all live in the society. It's all important. We all have our careers to think about. We either will have uh, professional careers or we'll have entrepreneurship um, goals in life. But at the end of it, if you earn money, what is it that you're going to do for the society? What can companies do for the society? So I hope to... Um, inspire all of you to think about how you are going to navigate your professional life by keeping some of the ideas that we discussed today in mind as you make your decisions. Okay, I'm also going to invite Mayuri to the stage to share some of the work that we do with Exact Spatshala. Um, she's very, very involved with it. So yes, we do sponsor it, but she's the one who helps make it real. So it would be more interesting for all of you to hear from her than from me. So we'll, I will split the stock. I'll do the first part of it, set the stage for her, and then Mayuri will come and share the real stories of what it is to like run Pachala on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay, so let's get started. If I say the word role of corporation, in the world, what do you think about? What's the first word that comes to mind? Raise your hand. I know you guys can think and you guys are very, very smart. So share. What is the one word that comes to mind? What do all the companies talk about when they say, when they talk about their company's social responsibility? What's the word? Come on, one of you raise your hand and tell me. Is it CSR? What does CSR stand for? Corporate Social Responsibility. Okay. So all of us think that companies that become successful have to do something for the society. But I want to challenge that thought process. And that is what engineers are supposed to do, right? Think about world problems and think about solutions and think about the status quo and decide if they want to change what exists today. So a lot of companies feel good about themselves when they do their CSR responsibilities well. 
which is a must. Like I'm not recommending that people don't do their CSR, but we are going to dive a little bit deeper into this. Okay, so do you think that CSR applies to all the companies? Does CSR apply to all the companies? Yes, no. How many of you think yes? Raise your hand. Let's make this interactive. Raise your hand. How many of you think CSR applies to all the companies? Okay. How many of you think CSR doesn't apply to all the companies? Okay, and what do the rest of you think? Okay, well, this is from the government's website. CSR does not apply to all the companies. You have only every company having net, net worth of 500 crore or more. Any company having turnover of rupees 1000 crore or more. And every company with net profit of 5 crore or more. Only companies that fall in those three buckets have to actually do the CSR by law. How many business owners do you know who have companies, who have a business, but they don't fall in this bucket? Right? So is CSR going to help the society as much if all the companies don't even have to do it? It's a government law, but it only applies to a small percentage of the company. Okay, now next question. You guys have to answer it because I made it into a question answer format. What is the percentage of contribution that companies have to do for CSR? Anybody know the answer? Okay. 2% of their profit. This is again from the government's website. You are only expected to contribute 2% of your profit to the CSR activity. Okay? Now, why am I taking you through all of this, Matt? Let me see if a slide will help you. You guys are all data analysts. Look at data, make sense out of it, analyze it. So let's walk through what it means. A company that has a revenue of 100 crore. Okay, are you guys following? A company with a revenue of 100 crore means they're selling something that is worth 100 crore. Typically, companies make 8 to 10,000, 8 to 10 percent of profit on their revenue. So if a company's revenue is 100 crore, on an average, how much profit do you think they are making? 10 crore. Okay, so that's the second line. From that 10 crore, after all the deductions, all the tax savings, everything, they have to pay 20 to 25% of that money as taxes. So how much is that? 2 crore. And 2% of it, of 10 crore is what they have to pay for their CSR. How much is that? 20 lakh rupees. So a company that is making 100 crore in revenue each year is responsible to pay 20 lakh rupees for their CSR activity. Okay? So if we all sit back behind and say, our job is to only worry about our career, our growth, our life. And CSR will take care of the needs of the society. Will that work? Is 20 lakhs going to help take care of the big, heavy problems of the society? No. Also, how many of you have expected the government to take care of some of these problems? Again, they are also getting a very small percentage of the pie, so they can fix all the problems for us. 
So my appeal to you is to think about where that companies have, oops, companies have control over that hundred crore pie. What if we did something more creative with that hundred crore bar rather than waiting for the two lakh bar or twenty lakh bar or the two crore bar to make a difference in the world that we live in? So I'm going to share with you you three examples of companies that I know that do outstanding work. And I apologize already in advance. All my examples are U.S. companies. Does not mean that Indian companies do not do good for the society. In fact, there are more Indian companies that are socially conscious because of the country that we live in. But it is because I live in America that I have these as examples. Okay, I read about them and I talk about them with my friends, so I, they, they are more closer to my memory. But I'm going to talk to you about how companies that have control over that hundred crore are making a difference in people's lives. Okay, anybody show of hands? Anybody has heard about this company? Bomba stock. Anybody from the audience knows about it? Raise your hand if you do. Okay, it's a company in America that sells socks, and the way they sell their socks and their tagline for their socks is: for every sock that they sell, one sock is donated to a person in need. Okay. Now this sounds like a really good company. If I go into the mall and I see two socks, one from this company, one from the other company, I am more likely to pick up a sock from them because I know that they stand for something more than just profit. <clears throat> this is in fact an amazing marketing strategy. So not only is it that these people are doing something good. They are letting me, as a consumer, also feel good about it. There are on Nasdaq's index in U.S. It's the ex uh, stock exchange of U.S. There are special funds that only invest in companies that are socially conscious, and this company qualifies as a socially conscious company. So, this company does well because for every sock that they sell. They donate one, so the person who receives that donation benefits from it. I, as a consumer, feel good about spending my money with a company like this. Investors who invest their money feel good about investing money in a company that does this. And to top it all, it helps with their marketing and their bottom line. So now their CEO is able to sell more. And have more leverage, so his hundred crore bar keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and he is able to eventually do more for the society. Why am I sharing these examples with you? Because very soon you all will be graduating, and you all will be taking up your first jobs or thinking about starting your own companies. We all live in Gujarat. Gujarat is the most prosperous state in India and known for its in business. Entrepreneurial um, mindset. So a lot of you might decide to do companies. These are good ways for you to think about how to base your business model. Beyond all the good that that they do, this company's efforts is their best reason for their growth. So it's it's doing good for the society can actually be really good for business. That's the message I want to convey for you. Okay, this is the next company, Tom's. How many of you have heard about this? Raise your hand, guys. I know. Okay, one person. Anyone else? Okay, they also have a very similar mission. For every Tom's shoes that they sell, they donate one shoe. Now, this company started back in twenty-seven, two thousand seven. They did really well. They went to the top of the um, 
uh, stock market, they, their shares were worth a lot, the company was worth a lot, they got good valuation, good market share. It was a very, very successful company. And then the company got bankrupt. So the point I'm trying to make here is just because you have a tagline or a marketing line or a company mission that says you will do good for the society doesn't automatically make your company work. You still have to make the right strategic decisions, the right business model. You have to make sure you're growing the company uh, systematically, et cetera, et cetera. Over the last few years, they have changed their motto. So instead of saying you buy one shoe, we donate one shoe, they've changed it to say that for every $3 in profit that they make, they will donate $1 to the people in need. So business models have to evolve. Business models have to change. You have to continue to make good strategic decisions for running your business. But if you are able to pair up a social cause with your business model, it is like recipe for great success. Okay, this is my last example in this series. Then I have a few more companies that are doing really well. But this another company is also one of those companies that has a business model that says, you buy one uh, cereal bar from us and we will feed one kid in hunger who is hungry. Okay, so that bar, the, the, the bar is called the bar that saves life. This company is also doing really, really well. Okay, so these are just examples for you to get inspired, not just for you to think, where do I work? Which companies do I go to work for? Which companies do I invest my money in? But also when you want to set up your companies, how should you set them up? I do a lot of interviews when I hire people in my company and I will always end my interview with, so what is it that you want to know about your, my company? And sometimes I get questions, other times I don't get any questions. But when you sit for your interviews, it's a really good time for you to ask the company, the person who's interviewing you. So how is your company setting themselves apart? What is it that they are doing? How does your business model support your social responsibility? Not just worry about the 2% profit that they will donate to CSR and feel good about. By no means am I saying that CSR is not an important thing. I'm saying it's just not enough. And so we need to think about starting companies, doing work with companies that have an evolved business model. Okay. Now, those are some of examples of companies that had a business model that said, you buy one thing, we donate another thing. Now, let's look at a, a different um is, uh, different data. A couple of years back, this is data, this is a little old data, but developed countries and charities invested $3.7 trillion into developing countries. And how much did they donate to the same, in the same year, they donated $200 billion. So $200 billion across all developed countries, putting their money in all underdeveloped countries through charity, through direct donations, etc. That is a big number. $200 billion is a very big number. But just imagine how big the 3.7 trillion number is. So if we think that it is only the donation and it's only the charities that are responsible for doing good work, we are missing out on a huge amount of potential uh, scope for doing well. I'm now going to give you three other examples of companies that have done really, really well in, in the form of the investments that they are making. Okay. Mars, how many of you have eaten a chocolate from America? Okay. Most likely that chocolate was made by Mars. Okay. Mars is America's sixth largest company. And they make very important products like chocolate and coffee. What sets them apart? 
you know, they're just a company like any other company. What is setting them apart? What do you need company? What do you think a chocolate making company needs as the ingredient? Cocoa? Cocoa seeds? Very good. Thank you. And where are cocoa seeds grown? In African countries. Okay. What is going on with Africa right now? A lot of instability. Right? A lot of governments are getting toppled. A lot of coups. A lot of instability. Every company in the world, every chocolate making company in the world is extremely worried about how is it that they're going to get keep getting the source, the cocoa to make their chocolate. But one company is not worried about it. That's Mars. Why? Why are they not worried about it? They actually need more cocoa than anybody else. They are not worried about their supply for cocoa because their relationship to the cocoa farmers is not limited to a trade. You give me cocoa, I give you money, go home, don't talk to me. That's not their relationship with the traders. They have actually invested lots of money in farmer education, farmer insurance, farmer uh, coaching, training, education, support. They give farmers loans. They invest in the kids' education of the farmers. They teach them about good irrigational policies, like processes. They introduce them to world leaders who can give them ideas about how best to harvest cocoa. So Mars is not worried about, will I get my cocoa? Because guess what? If the farmers who have learned how to do better farming because of this company's intervention, when they have to pick who they want to sell their cocoa to, who are they going to sell it to? Mars. So doing good for the society, for your community, for the people who work with you, for the societies from where you source your ingredients, the supply chain, all of this is not just good. It's actually good for business. This is an amazing strategy from Mars to say, not only will we guarantee our future revenue and our future sourcing for based on this, but in, the, in that effort, we will benefit the people who are our suppliers. Okay, and businesses have the power to do this because how much money is invested by businesses? $3.7 trillion compared to how much is donated? A small minuscule portion of it. So if your investments can be done in a way that sets you apart as a business, then there is no stopping you. This is what your strategy professors in any MBA school are going to teach you. These are amazing strategic lessons from companies that are doing this really well. Standard Bank is another company. This is my second out of the three examples that I'm going to share with you. Standard Bank works in Africa. So does a lot of other banks. Standard Bank, in Africa also, just like India, you have to contribute 2% of your profits to helping the society. But they are not stopping at that. You know what they have done? They have created a trust fund from that 2,000 uh, from the 2% money that they would donate. From that trust fund, they make loans to farmers who would otherwise not qualify to get loans. Because these are loans, these farmers have to repay the loan and then they use that money to give more farmers loan. Now, they have tied their own success with the success of the farmers who are getting the loans in Africa. And because of that, they have a lot of incentive to teach these farmers how to do their business as well. So these micro loans, these coaching classes, this uh, strategy classes, this marketing sessions that they teach these African farmers is helping the farmers be successful. And because the farmers are successful, they are repaying the loans. 
and because they are repaying the loans, more farmers are being awarded those loans. And so it's a really, really good positive cycle that they have been able to establish in Africa. And so now, if a farmer or anybody in his family who has benefited from this wants to open a bank account, which bank will they go to? Standard Bank. What is every bank's dream? That they increase their footprint, that they have more members, more subscribers, more people are creating accounts with them and more people are depositing money in those accounts. Standard Bank is doing that by first thinking about who they need to help. And then it's automatically helping their company grow. Okay, my last example is Airbnb. I'm sure more people know about Airbnb. Raise your hand if you've heard about this company. Okay, great. All right. So, and how many of you have actually used this company to make a reservation? Okay, good. All right. So, Airbnb is what a lot of Americans use. Actually, everybody around the world uses them to book rooms or houses uh, when they're traveling. So I took my entire family to Italy and I booked the villa using Airbnb. It was easy. I told them which city I wanted to go to and I could see hundreds of options. I could read what my amenities that I cared about because my mom wanted to cook when we were in Italy. So I needed a place with a kitchen, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It was extremely easy to find the type of housing I needed by looking up the website of Airbnb. Airbnb makes millions of dollars. How strong do you think that IT team is? Very good, right? And what is the mantra of IT? What do you consider a good product? A product that is simple to use, right? Actually, they say, Steve Jobs used to say, say this, that in order to make something simple, you have to make it very complicated in the back. If you can master that complexity, you can provide a good user interface for your products. So Airbnb has cracked that. They pay their CTO millions of dollars. They pay a high performing IT team. They have great UI UX engineers. They have amazing product managers. They have a really, really good competitive product. They have a huge market share in it. They're giving a lot of hotels a run for their money. They've really, really figured out what somebody who is looking for housing needs to do. Now, why am I sharing this with you? Recently, in the last two weeks, we have seen two global uh, disasters. One in Morocco with their earthquake, where 3,000 plus people died. Another in Libya with the flood, where more than 5,000 people died. Everything over there is devastated. There are no homes their home because it is not safe. Now, people in the area of these disasters want help. But how do you help? How do you find out? So many people have become homeless. They need a shelter. And so many people from across the country and the world are going to that area to help. You know, Red Cross goes there. When we had a disaster in Kutch, so many people from other parts of the world went there to help, right? So when people from outside come to your city and there is a disaster and there is no place to stay, how do they help the people who need help? So Airbnb did an amazing thing. They said, if we declare some area as a disaster area, anybody can list their home for free. They have to pay no commission to the company and anybody can book a room or a hotel or a couch or a house for free on their website. They've already figured this out. Who otherwise, Airbnb, without spending even one dollar on actually donating to some cause, they have figured out how to really support the people who are trying to make a difference in those communities. If we were to give the same amount of money to Red Cross and tell them, Oh, you want to go help them? Why don't you create your own app? How much money would they have to spend on creating that app? 
would they be able to afford the cto from airbnb would they be able to afford the same type of engineers to create that app probably not so airbnb solved a big problem for disaster zones without spending an extra dollar and figured out how to help them and then the same people when they want to book their next vacation are going to book it where on airbnb so this is an amazing company strategy to use your work the work that you are doing pair it up with the work that and the support that the company and the country means to figure out how to make a big difference there i'll end with an example from exact so we don't do anything as amazing as what airbnb does but this is our small little effort so exact sells its software to medical health care universities in america so all my clients have medical degrees they are a nurse they are a doctor they are a physical therapist they are a social worker every client that we have we now have more than 1000 universities using our software everybody we have is a medical professional we also have offices for exact in baroda and bangalore and pune and in pune there is an orphanage that is not too far from our office that really that has 50 plus kids but these kids don't get the same medical attention that they need there is also a small community hospital that they have built and they also always struggle to get doctors and volunteers to help with the medical process so we decided that we were going to pay the money to bring these medical doctors from america to spend a week here with the kids and in that community and provide healthcare to the people now these clients are donating their own time we are paying for their transportation and their accommodation and the community is getting benefit right so it, it's it's a small small very minuscule thing but you have to put your thoughts into the work that you are doing okay so this is one thing that i hope makes you think about when you have your company what are the kind of things you do but the other thing okay so i'll leave you with this thought before we go to mayuri and learn more about patshala but the thought i want you to leave with is that businesses are responsible for solving the biggest problems of the society they have to bring their people their capital their strategies to do solve these problems and not hope that the donations that they are making with their csr funds would be enough to solve these big problems does that make sense okay All right, I will hand it over to Mayuri. She will talk to you about what we do at Patshala. Okay, so I'm coming on the stage for the fourth time, I suppose. The only difference is that I used to come here, I think, before 2018, as part of Exact when I was hired by RT in the HR department. Uh, to recruit and to talk about the company before the recruitment process in GSET for internship, I suppose. And today I'm coming to represent Patshala, which is a small initiative for us. It is a very big one, and um, for our team, um, which is a happy space, which is a safe, secure space for um, the underprivileged children. Where primarily the goal is to um, give them academic support, but it's much beyond that, and I'll talk about that. The only thing is when Arti told me to come here, she said that you have 15 minutes to talk about it. Maybe 15 to 20, you can talk about the entire Patshala initiative because you work in day in and day out uh, with the children, with the teachers, everybody. Um, I'm missing the director here, who is Maya Shintre, who's the director of Patshala, and she's the one who started Patshala, and um, she continues to lead the show. Um, hopefully, she'll get to see the, live, the streaming once it's recorded. Um, uh, so the 15 minutes were a challenge because when I told my co colleague about it that it's just 15 minutes, it's 15 minutes, and she's like, "What will you speak for 15 minutes?" And I'm like, "That's not my problem. My problem is 
that's too less for me because there's so many stories in Patshala that I would like to share with all of you. But um, of course, I can't do justice to the 15 minutes otherwise. So I'm going to try and pick, cherry pick a few things and I'm going to share some success stories and certain things about Patshala. Um, Patshala started with a thought when I was working in exact. I distinctly remember that RP had once mentioned, given the humble, uh, giving, passionate, and caring person she is, and full of gratitude, that I have been, so she's been uh, receiving a lot of support from her loved ones, the family that she's brought up in, um, who's been very supportive, her parents, um, her professors, her teachers, and everybody, right from the primary education to all the way to um, where she is today. And so she's been an extremely grateful person. So for her, the burning desire and problem was, how can I give back? What can I do to help those who, have, who don't get that support, who don't get these opportunities? So opportunity was something that she picked up on. And she's like, I'm going to make this happen. And today we have Patshala. We started it on 5th of um, September, which, is, which happens to be Teacher's Day uh, in 2018. And that, that's how the seed of Patshala was sown. Now, to, for the plant to grow, we of course needed um, the field, the people, and the right person to pick on the right ingredients and uh, nurture the plant. So that happens to be Maya Shintre. Uh, you can see on the left hand side. She, uh, her, and so for Aarti to get that support, the first people, immediate people for her to look up to was her family. And so it was Maya Shintre who happens to be her Masi. And she decided to step in. Um, she used to take private tuitions for 30 years. And she Aarti convinced her to join and um, get started with uh, the initiative. So initially, we started Patshala Exact's um, uh, cafeteria, where, which is like a shared space, where we got like a small um, space. Because she, she always says that we should make the best utilization of the premise of the place we are in. And that is how um, we started with 18 students um, from grade 3 to grade 8. Um, there were about two students in grade three, few students in grade four, few students in grade five. And how did we get the students? Now, Maya had, Maya Shintre had to go all the way to their, um, so there is a slum across um, Exact's office, what is the office. And she, so she went there and talked to each and every family and got to know about the families, the backgrounds they are in, the children that they have in every family. And um, she wanted to convince them to come and see the space where we are going to start the um, um, classes and so with one class, one teacher, Maya Shintre, we started it with 18 students. Um, initially, Arthi was like, let's give them this, let's give them a bag, let's give them a bottle, let's give them stationery, let's um, sponsor their books. So we started doing all of that because that was necessary. Um, and then uh, one of the authorities of the village, uh, the slum area, started following Maya, Shin Maya Madam. And so um, he was a little skeptical of, uh, suspicious of what's going on. What are the activities are you doing? Because um, it doesn't, it seems too good to be true. And so we were, uh, she, he was wondering, ki, yahan pe kya ho kya hai? Itna sab de rahe ko. are they doing something else? Because not many times people can have that notion that this may be in the wrong direction. Uh, what is behind the scenes? We don't know. So they all, so he followed all, her all the way to Patshala, to her house, and finally got convinced and spoke to her, like, look, I've been following you for a week to just see what kind of activities you do. And I'm really, really proud, uh, uh, thankful to you to start this. And the selfless work that you do is amazing. And that is how he spread the word in his community. And then we now have, in 2023, about 170 students from grade 3 to grade 12. Now, um, so those are our classrooms. Uh, what we do in Patshala is primarily the academic part of it, the academic support. So we teach them the curriculum that is taught in school. But moreover, in fact, when we say that this primary, there's a lot of groundwork that is needed um, because the readiness of the student has to be there. It has to come. It doesn't come naturally because they've been deprived of their opportunity. They've not been taught to be curious or right, encouraged rather to be curious learners. There's nobody to guide them in the right way through stories um, to tell them, uh, to make them wonder about life, to make them feel like, look, I want to ask a question. So um, not many times these kids are shut down for asking a question, Desija, na karto. So instead, we wanted to kind of break that. The way we try to do it is by getting to the level and saying, look, we want to interact with you, we want to be your friend. 
um, by building a good relationship and a rapport so that there is an icebreaker and they feel confident to raise their hand and ask a question in the class. That is absolutely necessary for them to learn and be more curious about life. So um, cracking jokes, um, having some short stories and asking them what would be the moral of the stories. So these are a lot of behind the scenes that we do with these students. The other thing that we did was we realized that one of our students was complaining about a toothache and she didn't come to class. Then we picked up on that and we were like, let's have a dental camp. Um, let's get everybody checked. And in Exact's um, office, there is a team called Approved where we've hired medical professionals because they check the data of the student, the personal data and the vaccination history. And it has to be a, a medical professional to certify those documents. Um, some of you may already know about um, that part of it. Um, it's called Approve and Sheetal here leads that team. Um, so there were two dentists hired um, in that team. And so luckily, coincidentally, we met them and they were like, we are happy to do something for Patshala. And we got them, we got all the students checked and most of the children had cavities in their mouth. Um, when I asked one of the students randomly, um, what, uh, what, 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 do, what does it mean? What does it mean to have a cavity? So the child is like, um, dentist pase jao pade pan, ma, mami na pade che, ke, ke che ke dentist pase jaso to bija char problem also. So these kids, these parents live with a lot of mindsets because of the lack of awareness that they hold, because of the lack of education that they have. And that is why the opportunities or the exposure that they don't get, we want to, they did not get, we want to give to our students. And so once we got the, med the dental checkup done, we are now going to talk to the parents and educate them and see if we can have awareness sessions around it to send them to dentists and who are, in fact, we, we connected with a lot of doctors now who are helping us to um, do this for our students. Um, missed another. Other few things that we do is character building, skill development, Career counseling. Now we we started our classes up until 10th, but after 10th, what what next? Some of our students are going to that route where they're going to um, go for a formal education as a degree program, but not everybody is want or is of that interest of doing this. Does not have the interest to hold or do this. But there are some who want to do some skill related job, but they don't know what to do. So we kind of give them uh, an understanding and the, a broader spectrum of these are your opportunities. These are many things that you can do. And so Vipul sir, I think I'm thankful to you that you came up and you took a session for the first batch of our students. Um, so they know that there is things beyond commerce and science as well. So these are a few things. So today, like we said, we have 170 students. We have also registered the foundation in the name of Saksham Neve, which means Saksham is the, you are capable and Neve is the foundation. Um, this so Patshala is one initiative of, the, of that um, foundation. Share just one more thing with you about this. You know how I was saying companies can make a bigger difference because I went two floors from the same builder for exact office. I was able to negotiate a much lower rent for this space. We paid the rent, but we, we didn't have a corresponding business with the renter. When I mean, with the owner, I would never have been able to secure such a good place in the rent that we paid today. So businesses have to use the leverage they have to do good. The other thing we do is we don't pay these teachers less money because they have to teach these kids. We pay them more than what they would earn if they were teaching, uh, doing tuitions at home. Right? So you, everything, every time we think about charity, we think that the people who work in those charities should make less money. But that's not the case. We should pay them well because there is no way to get discounted education. Anyways. So the person, the person who you see on the left hand side, um, it's a little dark there, but uh, the person who's inaugurating the office or uh, the Patshala premises happens to be Aarti's principal from Tejas Vidyale where she um, will finish the 10th. Um, yeah, so a little time on this slide. These are some of these are our first um, the uh, students from the first batch that graduated that did, did their 10th standard and they got excellent results. All our students are shining stars, but these are the ones who have inspired other students to do more um, and um, also independently. So Archal here, who, uh, who got 85% in her 10th standard and Archal and Vikas are the ones who studied in COVID. They couldn't go to school, but we had our partial running except for the two months of lockdown. 
uh, after one and a half months, we kind of had a social distancing and we resumed the classes. But um, they scored by purely staying in Patshala and studying for their board exams. And with Vikas, the, he had some dysfunction in the family. There were some domestic violences going on. He used to face the wall and study. That was his, his way of kind of coping with it. And um, that is when we learned that even with the adversity, if you're willing to make a difference in your life and willing to learn, if you have that desire in you, then you can make it work. Another person I would like to talk about is Jaimin, who got 91% this year in his board exams. So now he's gone to, he's taken science and he wants to become a CEO like Aarti is what he said. Um, he happens to be exact security guard's son. Um, so when exact security guard got to know about uh, Patshala, he's like, can I send my kids here? We're like, of course you can and you must. Both the kids did really well. He has an elder sister who got 75% and he got it 91%. So we're really, really proud of his success. Now, we, that, what you saw in the previous slide is just the tip of the iceberg is what we have seen as results. But what goes deeper is the groundwork, which requires a lot of counseling, mentoring, um, holding their hand and making them feel, look, I can do it. They are capable of th amazing things. So getting them to dream and get, uh, having some myth busters on the way takes a lot of effort. And all our teachers, and we are very thankful to all our teachers who have put in a lot of effort in this. Now, there are some students where we've tried to help um, them on a personal level. But that dilemma always stays there. That should we really, are we crossing boundaries? Are we kind of, um, you know, uh, exceeding that line where, you know, the parents don't want it or the child doesn't want it? So with that dilemma, I came across this beautiful quote where it says the people who need your help are often too tired for it to ask for it, offer it anyway. Drowning does not feel look like drowning. So it's okay to offer, it's okay to take that step ahead and you must. It's their decision tomorrow whether they want to take that help or not. So I think this, this really stuck to me and now we feel more um, uh, encouraged and motivated to do more for such communities. Yeah, and along with this, I would like to uh, bring your attention to du Durga Ben and Saroj Ben, who, so we also provide daily meals for our students. So every day, there is a, a dabba that comes for the students. They get the um, khali rabba and they give it back and they take the fresh ones. It's a fresh, like healthy food that we want to provide to them because uh, some of them are anemic, the girls especially, um, they come with a lot of health issues. So Aarti decided to kind of start with daily meal services since the last four years. And so Durga Ben and Saroj Ben, um, Durga Ben is, um, happens to be uh, Maya, Masi, Maya Madam's house help. Um, Maya Madam taught her a few recipes and so she was stretched to thin because she has two older kids. Um, now her son is also in the UK studying and doing his master's in science. Now I think he's apparently got a job. But um, Maya Madam has supported him all the way. Um, but she's the sole owner of the family. And for her to do better, um, Aarti and Maya Madam gave her the opportunity to start this catering services. Similarly, Saroj Ben has had financial crisis in her life and so we decided that they alternate between the two and we started the services for the children. Um, the Rakhi part of it is, uh, recently we had Raksha Bandhan and there is this uh, person who every year, Sanjay Bachcha, who sends Rakhis to all the uh, Javans on the border because they cannot come back to their families during Raksha Bandhan. So we got the opportunity in Patshala through a person uh, from Sevarthi organization who came up to us and said, can your kids make Raki? Who had happened to take a summer camp in May for all our students and taught them basic skills, art and craft, certain sessions, Ganpati, how to make Ganpati idols, etc., etc. And so our Patshala students were like, let's, let's do this. So they made 3,000 plus Rakis and they got three rupees per Raki um, as their pocket money, um, that, that as their earning, which out of which 10% of the uh, income that they earned, they gave to Patshala so that they, we could sponsor the uh, fees for other children. And the last thing, we sent our 11th graders who had just, in fact, the 10th graders who had just graduated, just uh, finished with their exams um, as scribes for the visually impaired students because they didn't have a facility to uh, give their exams in Braille. And so uh, I think about 10 of our 11th graders, they went right away without any hesitation that, that ma'am will do it. And they uh, wrote all the papers for our 
uh, for the visually impaired students. So that was a very big learning for them. And they were humbled to see that we are going to make a difference tomorrow to them and all everybody we can in our way possible when we graduate. So that gives them the zeal to do more. Um, apart from that, we do a lot of uh, fun things also with the students. We have festival celebrations. We do, um, we give them the opportunity to come on stage and participate so that they uh, don't have the stage fear. We also get a lot of volunteers and we are very, very grateful to all those who have supported us in the way to come up and do some sessions with the parents, with the students. And um, we have some interesting quotes on our wall. So this is an invitation to all of you. If you happen to come to Vadodara, please visit our Patshala and um, see how, it, how the students are studying there. So it's a happy space for us. And thank you for... Thank you. So anyway, so to conclude, this is the work we do through our CSR efforts. So CSR is again important that every company should do. But my appeal to you as you think about your careers, your companies that you want to form, etc., is that you have to think about something beyond CSR. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Arti Ma'am, for embarking within us the zeal for doing something good for the society on this eve of Engineers' Day. Now, I would like to request Provost Sir to kindly provide a small token of love from our institute to Arti Vaishnav Ma'am. Sir, please do the honors. I would once again request Provost Sir to kindly provide token of love to all the three executive and esteemed members of GH Patel Trust. Sir, please. Yes. like to take the opportunity to request Sony sir once again to kindly share a few words of wisdom. Sir, please. Few very good evening to all. Uh, we all are very fortunate that uh, on the third lecture of GH, uh, GH Patel Memorial Lecture, we have our alumni with us to share art of giving. So whatever she has learned from here, she is doing wonderful business, she is doing very good job. And all, uh, see, if, if you talk about her contribution for the society, she is really doing wonderful tasks. So it's the lesson for all the students to learn that whenever you do wonders in your academic and your professional career, you need to learn that how you can give back to society. So with this, again, I'm thankful to Aarti for uh, sharing her experience with us and motivating all the students for the GH Patel Memorial Lecture. Thank you. Thank you all.
I would now uh, take this opportunity and uh, call Dr. Amita Patel, ma'am, for a vote of thanks. It is an immense pleasure and privilege to offer a vote of thanks on behalf of entire GSET family. Let's commence with Gordon by Hathi Bhai Patel, whose generous and wholehearted donation embarked the voyage of GSET, and let's feel the divine presence of this donor. I would like to express my heartiest gratitude to Dr. C. L. Patel, sir, ex-chairman of Charudar Vidya Mandal, who nurtured this institute, and due to his constant efforts, GSET achieved this high. Now, it's time to express my heartiest gratitude to current chairman of CBM and president of CBM University Engineer Shibikubai Patel and his active team, who are actively working hard to put us at the newer heights. I'm also inducted to the founder provost of CVMU, Dr. Himanshu Soni, to spend his valuable time for this memor memorable lecture. In fact, this G.H. Patel Memorial Lecture Series is the brainchild of Sony, sir. Thank you, sir. I'm also grateful to the trust members of G.H. Patel Trust, Sri Lalit Bhai Mehta, Sri Rashmi Bhai Acharya, and Sri Rajini Kant Bhai Muki for his valuable presence on this occasion. R.P. Vaishnav, CEO, Exarj. We are really grateful as ma'am has spent her valuable time for her busy schedule during working days. And that's amazing. I would like to express my heartiest gratitude to Dr. Kaushik Nath sir, Principal GSAT, for his wholehearted support. I am also thankful to the in charge of principal of GSAT, Dr. Darshat Desai sir. Now, it's time to uh, say thank you to all our volunteers and team members. I'm also uh, thankful to the uh, prayer team volunteers, Dr. Yogesh Chauhan sir, for wonderful prayer. Alpesh Bhai and his team for providing YouTube services. Ramesh Bhai Sargara and his team for technical support. Bijal Ma'am and her team for beautiful Rangoli and decoration. Dr. Vipul Shah coordinator of this event and his team for arranging such an interesting event. Dr. Kavindra Jain sir, Krishna Patel and GSET office staff and all those who have directly and indirectly helped us to make this event successful. At the end, I would like to thank you to the Almighty for giving the strength to execute this event. Once again, thank you very much to all of you for your valuable presence. Thank you. I would now request everyone to please rise for the national anthem. Bharat Bhagya Vidata Punjab Sindh Gujarat Maratha Dravid Uttal Banga Vindhya Himachal Yamuna Ganga Uchal Jaladi Saranga Tava Shubh Name Jage Tava Shubh Ashish Mange Bhaye Tava Jaya Gatha Jane Gane Mangal Dayak Jaya He Parat Bhagya Vidata Jaya He Jaya He Jaya He Jaya 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 He Thank you. Thank 
Ah, okay. 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 